Hi, I'm Derek Dahl, and uh, my job here at Dana Innovations, which is the parent company of Sonance, iPort, and Trufig, is uh, Director of Product Management uh, uh, for iPort. And uh, just quick background, I've been here for going on my eighth year. Uh, before that, I worked for a company called Apple. And joining me today is Chase Waterhouse, who uh, is uh, on our iPort marketing team and runs marketing for CI. Good morning, everyone. Glad you were able to make it. Uh, Chase, as well as myself, is, uh, is an Apple alumni as well. Uh, so some of the Apple DNA that, that I pour here. So we wanted to spend a little time with you this morning and, of course, talk about our new Luxport product. Uh, we're in sort of the launch phase for Luxport. We also wanted to spend a little time and just go over uh, some of the other products that we believe are, are just relevant for the conversation here, uh, including our surface mount product and our express product. Uh, but we'll spend the bulk of time around uh, Luxport. At Dana Innovations, we always like to start with why. Why do we do things? Uh, and so with iPort, when we think about the state of the connected home, you know, your mobile device has really be, become the, the center of the connected home. And the reason for that, of course, is because of apps. And we've seen this amazing transformation in our whole world, really, in the past 10 years with the influence of mobile devices and apps. And so when we look at what we're really about <clears throat> for iPort, we're about uh, embracing that that movement of, um, of app-based control of a, of a connected home, but thinking about the, the mobile device as being dedicated for control to create a better user experience. So our philosophy is apps are great and mobile devices are great. Let's take, let's take some of those mobile devices. Let's actually dedicate them in strategic locations around the home. Let's, make, let's give them the right accessibility, whether they're fixed devices that never change their geography around the home or whether they're, they're mobile devices that have uh, mounts and chargers that allow you to freely grab the device and walk around with it, but all the while actually dedicating those devices so that you don't have to be on your phone when you're at home the whole time um, controlling your home. And so the, the best way to do that is to make sure that you know there's always uh, accessibility, that there's that the devices are always charged and ready for you. And that in the cases where those devices are mobile, that there's protection as well, that device. And so that's really why our current lineup of iPort products exists as it does today. And so we've, we've uh, kind of dedicated the past eight years or so to thinking about this philosophy and really building out a great line of products uh, to support that philosophy. Along the way, we've also uh, learned a lot about user interface and how folks are actually engaging with their connected homes. And so in addition to our chargers and mounts and enclosures, we've, in the recent years, uh, set out on an um, initiative to add different UI elements to those enclosures. And so we have a series of products that actually add buttons to those enclosures, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. We also have now devices that are their own independent uh, easily configurable keypads as well. Again, to blanket the uh, the home with uh, with UI, and whether that's the mobile device that's dedicated, or whether it's the uh, the buttons that augment the use of those apps in that mobile device. So, going into 2018, our sort of premium lineup of iPort products is our Luxport Surface Mount, and of course our Express Keypad. Uh, Luxport is of course the new um, embodiment of our original LaunchPort product. And there's a lot of similarities between LuxPort and LaunchPort. But really the, the, the main reason for LuxPort is we wanted to take a category that we believe was just doing so well and was a great category for the whole industry in LaunchPort, and we wanted to enhance certain areas that, um, that we felt uh, which just adds so much more value to the product. And so, you know, mainly that's around aesthetics, but also around ease of installation uh, as well. So we'll talk about some of those details. But now we have Luxport, with, which is a great pairing with Surface Mount, where both these product categories uh, support uh, POE powering uh, in the wall applications. They both have the exact same uh, finishes and aesthetics 
so we can place Lux Sport and Surface Mount together in a home, and the products just go together so beautifully uh, in those high end homes. Before I get into uh, some more details around Luxport, I did want to take just a couple minutes and just talk about kind of the state of iPads and iOS because it's really important for the, the rest of the conversation. One of the things uh, that is a great benefit um, of iPad to the industry is the fact that we uh, are committed to tracking the changes of the Apple iPad portfolio. And so we put together this fun chart which basically shows you all of the different iPad models that have existed throughout the years. And you know, iPort is one of the few brands that actually seeks to create relevant products as soon as possible, as soon as a new iPad model is out in the market. And we will continue that um, over the years. One of the interesting things about this graph is that most of these products don't exist anymore. And so you can see that uh, you know it's uh, definitely quite a challenge for us to to keep up with that and uh, you know bring products to market that that are relevant. Um, this is the current lineup of of iPad products, and we like to just take a minute and talk about this because it can be confusing sometimes uh, what what products are actually out there. Uh, so we have the iPad Mini Four, we have the iPad Sixth Generation, with and this is a new iPad. This was just announced a few weeks ago at an Apple education event. And this product um, is actually the same exact dimensions as an iPad Air or as the iPad fifth generation or as the iPad Pro 9.7. So Apple has been gracious in uh, updating these products with uh, really um, features on the inside and keeping the outer dimensions uh, common. So a lot of the iPort SKUs that we, uh, that we have um, designed for the Air will fit perfectly in this new iPad 6 generation. This is the most affordable iPad, by the way, at just $329 for a 9.7 inch retina display. It's a really good value there. On the premium side, we have the iPad Pros, the 10.5 inch, which uh, has been around since June of last year. And of course, the big guy, the iPad Pro uh, 12.9 inch. And as we get into some of these product categories, we'll uh, take a moment to, to remind you um, what sort of support compatibility we have for these different iPad models. The other thing we like to talk about is something that we really uh, believe in, which is app multitasking. So with iOS 11, every single iPad model that's on that list, as well as a few generations past of uh, discontinued iPads, do support multitasking now. This used to be a feature that was only available on um, the iPad Pros, and now is available for any of these iPad models um, dating back to the iPad uh, Mini 2. And without multitasking, we have the ability to take two apps and actually run them side by side or run one app on top of another. And so we can get the most functionality out of that iPad by putting the most amount of control on one screen. In this example right here, I'm actually showing uh, the Sonos native app on the right, and I'm showing the Apple Home app on the left. And I like to show this because with HomeKit compatible products like Lutron Caseta or Honeywell or Echo B thermostats or um, August locks, things like this, I can actually consolidate the control of all those different types of devices um, for, for free without really any programming within the Apple Home app, which ships on every single iPad in iOS 11. And then alongside of that, I could run the Sonos app, which is the best in class music experience. And on one screen, I have control of my lights, shades, locks, thermostat, and audio, and there's no control system. So app multitasking is super powerful, and it's a great reason to use iPads as dedicated controllers around the house. So something that we really believe in here with that app multitasking, we, we, uh, we recommend checking that out and thinking about you know, all of the products and in the uh, the all net assortment and how that applies to the home app and to you know running multiple apps um, to create that best experience on the iPad. Now, with that said, let's dive into some of the details of our latest Luxport product. So, Luxport again, we wanted to take our mantra of Luxport, which is hold charge for tech, and we wanted to do that elegantly. We wanted to take a moment to, to step back and figure out how could we take our most popular 
uh, iPort category and launch port and just make it that much better. So we spent a lot of time really uh, taking our time refining the launch port concept and delivering a completely you know kind of new design and concept. The Luxport product just looks awesome. It looks luxury. It looks premium. The entire product uh, is made out of precision machined aluminum. It's uh, it's finished uh, with a beautiful media blast, and it just looks like uh, an Apple product. Really, it just looks like it really belongs in, in a high end space or in a minimalist space. With Luxport, we have the same uh, system topology as Launchport. So we have this concept of a station and a sleeve. And so with stations, we have two types of stations, a base station and a wall station. And the base station, uh, there's some really cool features about the base station that actually we've added to it from the original Launchport base station concept that we'll show you. Uh, the wall station, as you can see, is as minimalist as it can possibly be. It's literally just a a square of aluminum so it almost disappears when it's on the wall and then the sleeve we're actually changing the term sleeve and we're calling it a case and we'll tell you why in just a sec but whether it's a station on the base or the wall and a sleeve you have a you have a system there for Luxport now from a pricing standpoint the Luxport system is about six hundred dollars for a system depending on if you get a you know base station wall station or a sleeve and so this is about twice the price of a launch port system. Um, and when we think about how to sell launch port and Luxport, it's really about selling them together. Because what we have now with Luxport is we have an opportunity to take the concept of launch port, which we all know how to sell, and to provide an upsell opportunity to take those opportunities where there's really high end jobs, where there's a high high uh, degree of uh, importance on aesthetics and to sell Luxport, um, you know, and but, but starting with Launchport, if we sell Luxport in a vacuum, we find that um, sometimes the, the value prop and the price point of it um, doesn't make sense for some folks. But when we sell it with Launchport, we have a baseline uh, of understanding of this product that's almost become, you know, kind of ubiquitous, ubiquitous in the industry. And it's, it, it makes sense to translate the value up from Launchport to Luxport. So again, Launchport systems around 350, Luxport systems around 600, and 650 depending on what iPad model you are, you're purchasing there. Just like surface mount, Luxport actually comes in three different finishes. Uh, so this is great. We have a silver anodized, black anodized, and a white finish. Um, and we now have an, an opportunity between Luxport and Service Mount to standardize the look and the finishes. Uh, one of the nice things is that Luxport and Service Mount are actually made in the same place. And so we have great control now over just the, the, the look and the aesthetics and the color of those products. So assorting Service Mount and Luxport uh, in the same home uh, is, is an easy thing to do now. A little bit more about some of the products within the Luxport system. We have the Luxport case. And the Luxport case is something that we've completely redesigned from the original Launchport sleeve. Instead of a sleeve where we have kind of two halves that slide together, what the Luxport case, we now have uh, more, more of an, an encasement and an installed piece that goes around the iPad. And the reason why we did that was so that we could have a nice, clean, symmetrical, uniform bezel that goes around the iPad. And we acknowledge that the iPad, in a lot of cases, is, is on the wall uh, most of the time. And so we wanted it to have a nice symmetrical frame when it's on the wall that was just aesthetically beautiful and striking and had a common look as the surface mount bezel, which is a, you know, a nice, clean, uh, symmetrical bezel as well. So the case has two pieces to it. It has a, a back shell and it has the bezel on front. The bezel is very similar to surface mount in terms of how you would actually install the iPad into locking clips. And then the, the, the back of the shell uh, just clips onto the, the case itself. And so now we have a, a, a result where we have a very clean back and a front and, and very nice transition between the back and the front. Um, 
you'll notice that the Lux port system, the mating portion of the case and of the stations is quite different from launch port. We basically went from a circle to a square. Um, we did that for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, the Lux port system is a completely different power system, which we'll talk more about in just a sec uh, than, than launch port. But, but also we wanted to make sure that there was a way to precisely mount and align the product when it was on a wall. So we've created this nice precise square so that when you mate the case with the wall station, it's gonna be completely level, whether it's in portrait or landscape orientation. You can also notice that all the iPad features are, are accessible, microphones, speakers, camera on front and back. And so we can use a Luxport uh, an iPad and a Luxport case for, for case and for intercom and for uh, camera accessibility functions if we wanted to. The base station, we had a lot of fun designing the base station. We wanted to, to create a product that was very minimalist, um, that just kind of felt like it wasn't even there when the iPad was on it. And so we've moved from the kind of triangular wedge shape of the launch port base station to more of this um, stand, if you will, for uh, the new Luxport base station. But the base station, even though it's very simple looking, it has a lot of stuff going on, um, kind of packed into the product. The, the base station actually uh, has an adjustable hinge. So when you mate the case to the base station, you can actually adjust the mounting angle, which is really, really nice. So this is a nice enhancement over the launch port system. Um, we have the ability to route the power cable from the base station out of the back of the unit or down into a grommet in a table. So if you wanted to completely conceal the wiring, um, you can do that if you mount the base station or place the base station over a grommet. We also have uh, the ability to lock and permanently mount the base station to a table. Uh, so we have a, a foot that comes off of the base station that you can actually for commercial, retail, um, enterprise, and conference rooms, places where you don't want the product to move or walk away. Um, and then we have a built-in security lock in that base station that actually, when the case mates to the base station, you can engage that lock and actually permanently lock the case to the base station. So very cool features built into this base station. Uh, we've also seen folks actually utilize these, uh, these locking and permanent mounting features to use base stations in kitchens uh, as, a, as, as a TV uh, hanging off the side of the kitchen cabinet. In fact, in our new Dean Innovations headquarters, we use a, a, a Luxport mounted, um, a Luxport base station and case mounted sideways uh, in our kitchen as a, as a beer menu for our beer taps. So if you ever get a chance to come out to Dan Innovations and enjoy some local brew, you'll see that. Wall Station, we have this product that has been designed to literally try to disappear on the wall. So you can see there's just one object uh, with no transition, material transitions, um, and it's this nice clean square. Um, you can see that there's a wall box uh, or wall uh, mounting box that's provided with the Wall Station. And the, the result is, um, you know, with our, our, with our white Luxport wall station and a white wall that sometimes it just kind of disappears. You don't even realize it's there. Now, a bit more on the case and some of the other products here. Um, the way the case works is there's actually a couple of holes on the side and the bottom of the, of the case. There's two holes where we can actually uh, use a tool to separate the shell from the bezel. And then we could also actually lock the shell to the bezel so that we have a, uh, a permanent encasement around the iPad. The reason why we have the locks is so if we're using the case with the base station security lock, then we have a comprehensive lock system where the case is locked together the case is locked to the base and the base is bolted to the table. Uh, the way that um, the case actually comes apart is we have a tool, a uh, security tool that we provide with the, the case. 
and then you actually place the tool into uh, the separation holes and then you actually just um, rotate the tool to pry the shell away from the, the front of the case. From a power and wiring standpoint, the Luxport system, the wall station, is actually powered through PoE. So if you're familiar with our surface mount product, we have a, a product called our iPort PoE splitter. And the PoE splitter comes with the wall station, so it's in the box with the wall station. And that PoE splitter allows us to connect to any PoE switch. That's a standard 802.3 AF switch. And we can receive power uh, you know, up to uh, you know, 300 feet or so uh, from the power source in our rack to the wall station location. So we just run one cat cable to that location. If there's no PoE switch on the job, we also sell a PoE injector. That's an optional product you can buy. Uh, that's the same PoE injector that comes with our uh, service mount system as an option. So, so common powering components between surface mount and lock support. Also on our PoE splitter, there's an optional two pin Phoenix connector, which allows us to use two wire that might be pre-existing in a wall if we're upgrading some old product to a Luxport. Uh, so you can optionally power uh, via two wire and at your head end, you just need a 24 volt power supply, which might even also be in the rack already. Now our base station is actually powered through USB-C. So we have a USB-C port on the bottom of the base station, and we provide a USB-A to USB-C power adapter and a 1.5 meter cable. This comes in the box with the base station. Um, now, interestingly, if the base station is permanently mounted and you wanted to power the base station off PoE, you could do so as well using our PoE splitter as an a la carte uh, power option. Um, the, the power supply that we provide and the cable that we provide, uh, you know, the cable is 1.5 meters, but if we're installing the base station, let's say in a place where we don't want to coil up 1.5 meters of cable, uh, you can actually use any USB-A to USB-C cable. So if you want to use a much shorter cable to, uh, to limit the amount of cable that's behind the base station and your power source. So in a kitchen where you have a backsplash and the base station is right by your, you know, your receptacle, uh, you could just use any USB-A to USB-C uh, cable uh, to clean up that um, the wiring behind the base station. We have two accessories for our Luxport system. We have what's called a USB charge module and we have the wall adapter kit. The purpose of the USB charge module is this is a piece that slides behind the base station and utilizes the USB-C port on the base station and provides two additional USB-A ports uh, this is for powering additional devices. So if you had this on the kitchen counter or you had this on a bedside, you could use the USB module with the base station. You could charge a couple of phones alongside the iPad that's mounted onto the base station. The USB charge module ships with its own uh, power supply. So you would uh, use that power supply to power the USB module and the Luxport base station instead of that um, USB-C power supply that I mentioned earlier. The USB charge module is a $100 accessory that can be added to a Luxport um, base station, and you can do it at any time. It doesn't uh, have to ship with the base station. It can just slide in um, as, an, as an afterthought if you wanted to. And the charge module comes in the three different finishes that the base station comes in, black, silver, and white. And this is a product that we're manufacturing right, right now. We haven't quite shipped it yet. It'll be coming very soon here in, uh, in Q2. Uh, an accessory that we do have available now is our wall adapter kit. And the purpose of the wall adapter kit, there's actually two purposes. One is to provide a way to upgrade a launch port wall station to a lux port wall station. So we, we basically use the wall adapter kit as a way to trim um, around the footprint of an old launch port wall station, uh, but also to use the same anchor points that the launch port wall station used to secure them out onto the wall. So a nice way to, uh, 
to upgrade from a launch bar there with that wall adapter kit. Of course, it comes in the same three different finishes, black, silver, and white, so three different SKUs for the wall adapter kit. And also, the wall adapter kit can be used for a second purpose, which is to be able to use a single game box as a space reserver and cover that single game box with the, the Luxport system when you go to, to finish an install. Uh, we recognize that in some locations, a box may be required for different code, uh, local regional codes, in order to, uh, to run a CAT cable if it's uh, new construction. And so the wall, the wall adapter kit can be used for that. Now, the ideal installation of Luxport Wall Station is actually to uh, use a two and three quarter inch hole saw and just cut your, um, your mounting hole uh, into, uh, into your drywall or your solid surface. Um, this will allow you to install a Luxport Wall Station without a wall adapter kit and give you that nice clean look of, uh, of the wall station by itself. More information about all these different installation scenarios is available at our iPort site in the support section. So if you go to iportproducts.com, click on support, there's some really great videos where we actually show you how to install the wall station in all the different scenarios, whether you're upgrading the, the launch port, whether you're using a single game box as a space reserver, or whether you're going to uh, do the, the clean install of the wall station by itself and use a two and three quarter inch hole saw. Uh, this is just a picture here of what that security lock looks like for the base station. Um, so that additional feature that's kind of hidden on every single base station. Um, you use a tool that we provide to engage that lock when you want to um, so that the case can remain locked to the base station again for those uh, commercial or enterprise applications of Locksport. Now, we talked about Luxport and Surface Mount, how we have this nice premium pairing now with, with iPort. They both have the same high-end aluminum finishing and bezel. They both are PoE powered or 24 volt powered for uh, the wall applications. They have this nice flexible installation. They, they're designed to be retrofitted uh, very easily. And of course, we now have the ability to have this higher selling price um, for our, our Luxport system and pairing it with our Surface Mount system from our prior uh, iPort models. Luxport, uh, from an iPad compatibility standpoint, supports the iPad Mini 4. So we have a mini-sized Luxport case. We also support all of the iPad 9.7 inch form factors, which that one SKU set is supporting of the Air, the Air 2, the Pro 9.7, the 5th gen, and the 6th gen, uh, the, the product that Apple just announced a few weeks ago, all of those 9.7 inch size iPads are basically the same size and they will fit in uh, the 9.7 inch uh, form factor of Luxport. Um, and then we do have Luxport for the iPad Pro 10.5 inch. It's about one inch difference from the 9.7 and, uh, and we do have a separate SKU set for that product as well. So basically three different sizes of the Luxport cases mini size, 9.7 size, and 10.5 size. All right, so that is uh, the latest and greatest, our Luxport system, the premium option for hold, charge, and protect of an iPad around the home and providing that flexibility of mounting wherever you want it to go and grabbing it easily without plugging in cables or fuss. Now, what I wanted to do is take a little bit of time and talk about our, uh, our surface mount product and surface mount buttons product, and, uh, and then right after this, um, our, our express product, since we have you on the call here. Now, our surface mount product, like I said, um, is a product that is powered by PoE. And so our surface mount system looks like this. We have a bezel, and we have electronic options. So we have a splitter and an injector as options uh, to power the surface mount. Uh, the way that the iPad is actually installed in the surface mount is it actually clips into the bezel. So you just drop it in and in a couple of seconds it clips in. By the way, this is the exact same way that you would actually mount a Luxport in the Luxport bezel. So we've used common components in how we design those. The Luxport PoE splitter is designed to uh, receive standard PO, PoE 802.3 AF from a CAT cable. And of course, USB goes to 
to the um, the iPad itself. With surface mount, we have the ability to use any standard box, place the PoE splitter, splitter in the box, and then place the iPad in any orientation around that uh, that box. And so that gives us the uh, the freedom to um, to adjust the exact location of the iPad and the bezel to align with other products that might be uh, on the wall in that location. And then we just magnetically mount the bezel onto the mounting frame and we have a complete surface mount installation. There are built-in security locks to surface mount so we could actually lock the bezel to the mounting frame. Uh, if we had commercial applications where we're using the surface mount as a digital sign and we didn't want uh, somebody to easily walk away with the iPad. So much like uh, Luxport here, we have our PoE splitter and we have the option of powering the surface mount through PoE, either a switch or through an injector if there's no switch available, which is an optional product that we sell at iPort. Uh, the bezel itself, much like the Luxport case, it has all of of the speakers and microphones accessible um, and of course comes in three different finishes black silver and white now one of the really cool things about surface mount is because we are fixing the iPad in one location we have the ability to hardwire the iPad to the network and so this is awesome if we have applications where uh, Wi-Fi just isn't an option, or if we prefer to hardwire things to a network, uh, we have the ability to do that with surface mount and, uh, and the iPad. So the way that we do that is we can utilize our PoE splitter, and then there's two Apple adapters, the Lightning to USB 3 adapter and the USB to Ethernet adapter. Uh, these two adapters allow us to get uh, both network and power into that single Lightning port that goes into the iPad. And then we do have a cable that simplifies the cabling uh, at the end of the, the chain here between the splitter and those Apple adapters. We call that the iPort uh, network cable. And that is a product that will basically allow us to run one CAT cable to our PoE splitter and then split out power and data separately from our PoE splitter to the Apple uh, networking adapters. If uh, the iPort, uh, network or data cable is not uh, on the job, that's okay. You can still accomplish this with the with just the PoE splitter. You would just run two CAT cables, um, one to our splitter and one to the uh, the Apple USB to Ethernet adapter. So the purpose of our iPort network data cable is just to um, simplify the installation and it only require you to run one CAT instead of two CATs. But all of these products um, can fit easily into a double gain box. So if we specify a double game box behind uh, the area where we are going to be installing the iPad, then we can hardwire the iPad to the network, and it uh, works really awesome. So surface mount, we can elegantly integrate iPad onto any surface, whether it's solid surface, whether it's uh, drywall. And with surface mount with buttons, we're going to take that minimalist aesthetic, we're going to add basically an IP keypad to the bezel so that we can have quick access to certain functions around the home. So if we're using control systems like URC or RTI and we want to uh, map some button presses to activate some macros or some scenes that we've programmed in those systems and allow anything to run on the iPad screen, um, doesn't have to be the control system app, then we have that freedom and that flexibility with surface mount with buttons. So surface mount with buttons can talk to uh, pretty much any major control system out there. Um, and specifically for U RTI and URC, there's some really great drivers and support that exists for surface mount with buttons. The way that a surface mount buttons works is we just um, discover the device once it's uh, put on a network. And then we can use the IP address of the service mount buttons device and pull it up in a web browser. And we have the ability to configure the device. We can give it a friendly name so that we can see that in our control system. We can set a static IP address. And all of the buttons on the service mount with buttons product 
construct our uh, backlit with LEDs so we can dial in the color and the brightness of the LEDs from this configuration screen. And then we can program uh, the, uh, the keypad in a control system. Uh, one of the things we've done is on our iPort website, if we go to iportproducts.com and click on support, uh, within service mount buttons, we have really great videos that show you how to actually step-by-step -step, um, download the driver for your respective control system and uh, make a TCP connection with our bezel and then uh, actually uh, route uh, macros or commands to button press events. And so we provide uh, an event every time a button is pressed, double pressed or pressed and held. And, uh, and then those can trigger uh, scenes and macros and discrete functions. Um, it's pretty straightforward. So we have a two to three minute video for Savant, for Control, for Crestron, RTI, and then URC has actually made a really great document um, that explains step by step how to do that in the URC environment. Now, our surface mount product uh, category supports all of the iPad mini models, the 9.7 inch size models, the 12.9 inch model, and the 10.5 uh, iPad Pro. Uh, service mount with buttons supports iPad mini 4, uh, the 9.7 inch sizes, and iPad Pro 12.9. Uh, so no support with service mount buttons for the older iPad minis. Uh, and no support for the 10.5 inch iPad Pro. All right, last thing here is I wanted to just talk about our Express audio keypad for a bit, and it's great pairing with a Sonos system. Uh, Want to do that, and then uh, we'll have a little, little bit of time at the end to uh, just answer any questions that you might have. So, Express, we talked about our belief that we want to create the best user experience in the home. We believe that that exists by dedicating mobile devices throughout the home to control the home. But we also believe that adding buttons in the mix and augmenting app control with buttons uh, creates an even better user experience because those buttons can give us instant control, instant shortcuts to certain functions throughout the house. And so when we looked at the Sonos system, uh, we said, this is a great system for distributed audio. We love the Sonos Connect and Connect Amps. In fact, you know, with our uh, Sonance uh, brand, uh, Sonos and Sonance are great pairings. Um, and so we said, great, how can we make the Sonos experience even better with a great iPort product? And so one of the things that was missing from the Sonos experience was just the simple, you know, uh, volume controls and audio transport controls in the different zones, physically in the zones. Um, where you want to actually control Sonos. So we created a product that allows you to control any Sonos device anywhere, anytime. It's Wi-Fi, it's battery powered. It literally, literally requires no wiring. Um, it can be installed in just a couple of minutes. And the whole goal here is we want to reduce the time to music. We want to, within a second or less, have you push a button and start playing Sonos in your house. So that, that Sonos experience become, that can become that much more accessible and enjoyable. So on the Express keypad, we have some audio transport controls like play, pause, and track forward. We have, of course, volume, so we can ramp up and down the volume anytime we want. And then we have a favorites button, which does quite a few things. It's actually, and there's a ton of power in this little star button, and we'll tell you more about what that does in just a moment. The Express keypad, like I said, is Wi-Fi and battery powered, so you can easily drop it in anywhere. It's also decor sized, so if you wanted to actually gang it up uh, next to a light switch, you could totally do that. Uh, or it's actually magnetic, so you can just kind of mount it anywhere. There's metal, like a fridge, or we have a, uh, a peel and stick magnetic mount, so you can actually mount it anywhere you want. You can hide it underneath a pool table if you want to have a, a secret location to start your Sonos music in your entertainment area. Anything you can really imagine. So anywhere there's Wi-Fi in the home, you can use um, Express. It just operates on a normal Wi-Fi network. It gets an IP address. Um, can be static or it can be DHCP. Depends on how you set it up. And uh, yeah, the idea is that you just have this nice, simple way to drop in keypad control of Sonos. Now, we launched Express about a year ago. And over that time, 
and we you know, just listened to feedback of how folks were using the product and really what folks wanted to do with the product. And so we created a, a new software update about a month and a half ago, two months ago, called uh, 2.1. And so this new software allows us to do three really cool new things with the Express keypad. Um, one of those things is we have the ability to decide if an Express keypad uh, is a controller of an individual Sonos zone or if it's a group controller to be a like kind of a party mode keypad. Uh, we have the ability to take all of the Sonos favorite content that might exist in a Sonos system, which could be up to 72 items, and distill that down to just a few favorites that might make sense for a particular zone throughout the house. So we call that selective favorites. And then we have the ability to actually automate the Sonos system without a control system using a new feature that we created with Sonos called Scenes. And so I'm gonna take a couple minutes here just to explain what these features are in a little bit more detail. And these features, by the way, exist uh, in our free iPort Connect app, which is an iOS app that can be downloaded for free from the App Store. And that iPort Connect app is used to configure the Express Audio keypad in about two minutes. So you can drop on your Wi-Fi network and start talking to Sonos. So our one of our new features is this idea of individual volume control versus group volume control. So one of the things that we're able to do is while you're setting up the keypad, we're going to ask you, do you want this keypad to be dedicated to one zone throughout the house? Or when groups exist, do you want it to automatically revert to be a group controller? And so we give you this option because you know some folks, regardless of what's happening within the Sonos system, they just want that keypad on the wall to be a volume controller for that that particular zone. So if I drop one in the living room, I just want it to only control volume in the living room, and that's fine. So we give you that option now. Other times there might be a, a, a keypad where you say, hey, that's my party keypad, so I want to grab that and keep that in my pocket. And whenever well, whenever I'm entertaining or I have a group, I want to be able to uh, control the volume of all the devices within that group. And so you have that flexibility now with this um, this toggle feature in our product. Just a moment here. All right, the next feature is what we call selected favorites. So the purpose of selected favorites is, is this. Um, Sonos gives you a way within my Sonos to, uh, to create favorite items. Those favorite items can be a playlist, it can be a station, it can be an artist, and it can come from any source of music. It can come from Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music, whatever you can imagine. And so with selected favorites, what we're gonna do is expose all of those favorite items that you've already set up within your Sonos system, and then to be able to decide which of those uh, you want to actually activate when you press the star button on your keypad uh, for a particular room. And so what this means is that we can actually start to curate Sonos content for certain rooms around the house, which is pretty awesome. So you can see we have this screen up here from our app which shows all of our favorites, but I only want to choose three favorites. By the way, what I can also do is I can reorder those favorites because uh, within my Sonos, you actually have to um, view your favorites in alphabetic order. So I can I can uh, reorder those favorites to anywhere I want, and then I can send those to the keypad. So now the keypad that is in my entertainment area uh, only will play those three favorites when I press the star button. And those three fa favorites are music that I want to use when I'm entertaining. Uh, I can have a different place around the house. Let's say I have a guest room and I want to have completely different favorites and only have those favorites accessible in that guest room. And so with the selected favorites feature, I can curate that music and, and select it for those different rooms around the house. Some killer applications for this would be, let's say you have a gym and when you walk into the gym, you want to hit the start button and just play your gym music. Maybe you have like a, a pump it up, uh, playlist and then you have like a cool down playlist uh, so you can tailor that music just for that part of the house or let's say there's a kids room and you want to allow the kids to use Sonos but you don't want to give them a phone so they're on a mobile device and also you don't want them to be able to access um, inappropriate music so you can just program kids playlists to the keypad that goes in the kids room so some really cool uses to how you can uh, utilize the selected favorites feature 
uh, with a, a custom bonus and stuff. Hey, Derek. Yes, sir. Is there any way that I can get one that will only play inappropriate music? <laughs> Absolutely. If you just want to choose that uh, type of content, you can do that as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, hey, just a quick reminder for everyone, uh, there are a couple questions coming in. If you have any questions, please type them in the uh, questions down below and we'll be addressing them shortly. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, the last thing here I'm going to show you is uh, scenes, and then we'll be able to um, answer some of your questions here uh, in just a few minutes. So with scenes, we have the ability to do something that you cannot do within the Sonos app, and that is actually automate Sonos to bring it back to a particular setup and arrangement um, that you would have otherwise have to, had to do manually every single time. And so with a scene, there's kind of three elements. Number one, with a scene, we can create a group of Sonos devices. Number two, we can set the volume levels for each of those devices. And number three, if we wanted to, we can even decide that a specific type of Sonos music is going to play, a specific favorite con content. And so the, the, the purpose of, um, oh, sorry, one thing. All this can be done by pressing and holding the star button. So if we're just pressing the start button to access favorites, if we press and hold the start button, kind of like pressing and holding your home button on your iPhone to, to pull up Siri, um, then we get access to the scene. And so we can program one scene for keypad. And you know, the, the value here is let's say we have a certain type of uh, moment uh, throughout our day that happens you know, once a week or even once a day. Let's say we want to create an entertainment or entertaining scene where we want to group all the devices together. We want to set you know, the right volume levels for each of the rooms of the house, and then we want to play our, our party playlist. Um, you can actually program all this and, and program it to a keypad and then recall that party mode um, and even autoplay the content just by pressing and holding that star button. Let's say when you're getting ready in the morning, there's two zones that you want to group together and you want to play you know, your talk radio in the morning and have the volume low. You can create this scene and program it to the keypad that's in your um, in your bathroom when you're getting ready in the morning. So there's some amazing things you can do with scenes. To show you exactly how this works, you can see in the middle portion of the screen we have a, a, our, our iPort app there. And we get this UI in the app that gives us the list of all the Sonos devices that are in the home. Uh, and we can activate those devices to make them part of the scene. We can then um, if we wanted to go in and set the volume levels of each of the zones, although at the moment that we go and set up the scene, it's actually going to look at what is the current volume level of all of these devices. And so it'll actually bring that into the system for us. So if we already have the volume levels where we want them to be, we, it'll just adopt that, although we could tweak it here. The other thing we can do is we can decide that the volume level should be left unaffected. So if I want to create a group of devices, but I don't want to affect volume, then I can just click that uh, don't control volume option, which is nice. And then the last thing I can do is I can optionally decide to play favorite content. All right. So in this example, when I press and hold the, uh, the star button on this keypad, it's actually going to do like my party mode where it groups all the devices together in the home. It sets them all to the appropriate levels and it starts playing uh, my Tom Petty music and I'm going to go entertain now in my home. Another example of using scenes that's a bit more subtle but very powerful is let's say I am uh, getting ready to, to barbecue and I'm getting everything ready in my kitchen and I'm listening to music and all I want to do is when I'm ready to go outside and barbecue, I just want to press the button uh, on, the bar or on the outdoor keypad that adds outdoor to the kitchen. So I can set up a scene for this where I can say, okay, outdoor is going to join the kitchen. Uh, I'm going to set the appropriate volume for outdoor. Maybe I, I figured out what is the right volume when I'm barbecuing. Um, but then let's say I don't want to have to uh, override the music that's already playing. I just want to continue playing what is already playing in my kitchen, which could be anything. So I'm actually going to leave my favorite content as no favorite. And then when I activate the scene, what's going to happen is it's going to join the outdoor to the kitchen, but it's going to continue to play the Beach Boys music that was already playing in my kitchen. 
So some pretty amazing ways that you can really customize the Sonos experience now with the Scenes feature. So with Express, we have these three new features, individual versus group volume, uh, selected favorites, and scenes, which provide really custom high-level features to Sonos um, that are just for custom integrators. So there's tremendous value that exists within the Express keypad for a custom install application, and it's a little $99 keypad. So to kind of sum things up, we talked about Luxport, Surface Mount, and Express. Of course, Luxport, our brand new premium system to provide mobility for iPad, hold, charge, and protect. Surface Mount, great solution to dedicate and fix iPads around the home. Hardwiring options to hardwire those iPads to the network with the Apple adapters. Optional Surface Mount with buttons to uh, create a better and more direct control experience with systems like URC and RTI. And then of course the Express Audio Keypad, the audio keypad for Sonos, a great way to add uh, quick and convenient buttons to any Sonos system. So thanks for going through the, the program portion of our deck here. We wanted to take the last kind of five to 10 minutes to answer any questions that you might have. And uh, for the moderator, I actually, I'm not seeing the questions, but if you want to just kind of go through them, then I can answer them as, yeah. as they're brought up. I'll just read them to you. Okay, so uh, a gentleman had a question about uh, the POE. I think we went through that pretty comprehensively, but um, do you mind backing through some slides back to the, the POE section? This was on uh, the Luxport tabletop and the look. Yeah. Sure. There you go. So what was the question? Um, it was um, a question about using them in a commercial environment where okay. it's going to be. And then also, I think you talked about hard mounting them to the tabletop and uh, cabling them through a grommet. Yes. Yes. So that is all correct. Um, so Luxport, because uh, it's a, a USB system, um, basically at the point of the station, whether it's a wall station or a base station, we're actually just plugging in the USB cable from the wall station or the base station to our POE splitter as an option. Uh, well, for the wall station, it's, it's how you would do it. But in the base station, it is an option to use a POE splitter with the base station. So if you wanted to actually, uh, let's say this is a conference room table, and you wanted to run like the USB cable from the base station into the table, and then inside the table or underneath the table, you you wanted to uh, run a cat from a switch and then place the PoE splitter under the table. You can totally do this. You can power the base station with PoE. Um, and this is a, an option in those commercial environments. If you, there's no 110 there. Um, you know, a lot of conference room tables, they're put in after the fact. And, you know, the, there's, there's no uh, high voltage that's built into the table or under the table. And so using PoE and just running a cat long distance is a great way to get around that roadblock. Uh, when you're installing a, a Luxport base station in a conference room. And then, of course, with that, because you can wrap the USB cable into the table, uh, then if there's a ground that exists on that table, then it hides all of the cabling uh, to that base station so that you just see a nice, clean uh, base station on top of the table. And then, you know, in terms of uh, how that works specifically and what it, what the, the bottom of the base station actually looks like and, uh, and how to you know, route that into the table, we actually have videos on a support section of our iPort site um, that'll walk you through all that stuff. Uh, so if you just go to iPortProducts.com, click on support, click on Luxport, then you'll find all of the videos to show you all the different base station installation scenarios. Okay, thank you for addressing that. Uh, so a follow-up question came up here from Andy. He's asking about um, using the Luxport, specifically the wall station, on yep. a glass wall or glass partition in a yeah. fancy conference room. Okay. Uh, Luxport wall station is not really designed to do that, um, unfortunately. Um, so we what we have done is if you do want to mount an iPad onto glass, we've actually created for our surface mount product, we've created a glass mounting kit. So you can take any surface mount model and 
um, install it on glass with our glass mount kit. What the glass mount kit does with surface mount is it actually will allow you to um, adhere the mounting plate to glass. We provide the um, commercial grade adhesive strips for that. And then we also provide in that kit a, um, a vinyl back that actually is installed on the inside of the conference room glass um, so that it hides all of the cabling uh, of, the, uh, of the iPad. And then what happens is typically when people do glass mounting for an iPad, uh, in a service mount, they'll do it right next to the aluminum door frame so that they have that door frame as a channel to run the uh, the power uh, from the uh, typically like an acoustic ceiling uh, down that door frame out to the iPad on the glass. Okay, thanks, Derek. That's a that sounds really good because um, I think we all know that drilling in glass uh, is not a good. It's not always. Uh, doesn't always end well. <laughs> um, we try to avoid. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right. So I have another. Uh, David is asking a question about the Lux port. Um, it's the same sleeve slash mount that is attached to the base station of the Lux port. So oh, the Lux mount is the same sleeve slash mount. So yeah, it's the same sleeves whether you wall mount or tabletop mount. That's correct. Okay, David, is that was that your question? Was can you use the same sleeves for a wall or a table mount? Okay. Oh, perfect. Yes, that was what his question was. Okay. All right. And another question came through from Tom. He's asking about. Oh, can you, Derek? Can you go back to the slide where you talk about the uh, the iPad uh, life lifespan uh, that shows all the EOLs? So yeah. Tom wanted to talk about, he likes to buy refurbished iPads. And you were talking about some of these are using the chassis from previous generations. So he might yeah. do that backward. He might buy the old generations and then use them in the new. Yeah. Series. So the best, the best way to do this is um, focus on that 9.7 inch form factor, which is the iPad Air, iPad Air 2, iPad 5th Gen, iPad 6th Gen, iPad Pro 9.7. All of those iPad models um, are basically the same dimensions, and you could use them in um, in uh, in that common form factor, whether it's launch board or lux board or surface mount. So that's a, a great way to to get a, a cost reduction on a, a refurbished iPad and use it in a current uh, iPod product. Okay, and then uh, Tom, I'll follow up with you via email, the email that you used to register for the event today, and uh, share that information with you. And by the way, that. Um, that generation in the, we don't have a lot of data yet in the Lux port because it's a fairly new product, but in the launch port, it is our number one seller and it is the product that we stock uh, most, we have the most inventory on hand. So we're not gonna get away from that any at anytime soon unless sales just absolutely drop off, which I don't believe that they will. Okay. Um, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. If anyone has any other questions, feel free to type them into the chat, into the question section. Oh, also, for those of you still on the call, it's almost all of you, I wanted to mention that, um, and we're going to go ahead and uh, end the recording, but for those of you who are staying on, uh, those of you who attended the session live today, uh, you'll get it. Uh, a follow-up email from me, and you'll be able to place any iPort products POs with uh, all net through the end of this week until end of day Friday. Um, and you will get 20% discount on any of the Lux port, launch port, or surface mount products or express keypads, essentially anything I port. So we want to thank you very much for your time today. And thank you for joining us for the training. And uh, also, I, I guess I failed to mention at the beginning for any of you who have uh, CDS certifications and you're looking for CEU credits. Um, participation in the AllNet webinars earns you uh, one half CEU. So if anyone has any questions about redeeming those credits to maintain your certification, uh, feel free to reach out to myself, uh, Rick Murphy at AllNetDistributing.com. I'm sorry, Rick.Murphy at AllNetDistributing.com or Bill Zydek. Uh, and I'm sure everyone gets emails from Bill every week like, uh, like I do. Um, anyway, Derek, I think, I think that I think that we've covered it. We certainly answered all the questions. Um, 
I don't awesome. Know. Well, it was a pleasure for us to, to be on, uh, on the call today. And, uh, and thanks for spending some time out of your busy day. We know you guys are running your own businesses. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have you spend some time with us. And we appreciate it. And we're excited about uh, these new products here. Well, I think we're going to do well with this. These are hands down the best looking iPod access or iPad accessories I've ever seen. So I'm very glad that that we've got them and and the awesome. pricing is pretty sharp. So we're we're looking forward to uh, doing good things with uh, Luxport this year. Great. Okay. All right. Well, thanks again, guys.